Hey, good morning, my friends. Welcome to the Back Shed Bible Study. It is Monday, December 7th, 2020, and it is good to have you here. I believe this is episode number 36 of the Back Shed as we are here, and uh, I am so glad to be here with you. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Cliff Carey, and I am one of the pastors at Sunrise Community Church in beautiful Fair Oaks, California, uh, where it's a, a windy 56 degrees here this morning. So uh, hope you're enjoying your morning or your day wherever you are, and it's good to have you on board with us. It's going to be a, uh, a fun morning, I believe. So I, I'm going to make a uh, few little uh, changes here on my screen so I can be sure I'm ready to be able to give you the best possible backshed that you could get. Well, we'll see how that goes. So, uh, so I'm going to start this morning by acknowledging it's December 7th. It's Pearl Harbor Day. And I had the amazing privilege several years ago, April and I did, I think it was on our, around our second anniversary. So I'm going to go with in 2005 of visiting Pearl Harbor for the first time. And, and that was a, um, uh, dare I say, a bit of a humbling and uh, solemn moment to, to go out there. Um, we, we did that day, we did, I remember we did Pearl Harbor, uh, that Bofin submarine, and went on the Missouri, and um, also great memories. That was when we visited that, that was, uh, April was really sick that day and just starved for food and I couldn't understand why she was so inflexible until a couple of days later when we found out that uh, Peter was on the way. So uh, that's another good memory from Pearl Harbor. But Pearl Harbor Day, we were um, talking to our kids the other night at, at the dinner table. I said, do you know what's coming up December 7th? Uh, what we memorialize, what we celebrate. And, and it took them a while to come up with it until I finally said, 79 years ago, at which time they started doing the math and figured out, um, okay, 1941, what happened in 1941? But uh, it, it's interesting to me as uh, we're, and, and this is all introductory stuff, this isn't what our Bible study is about today, but um, it's interesting to me as we look back at Pearl Harbor, uh, over the years there have uh, been so many people around that remember the day. And it's just becoming fewer and fewer. I know my mom, who's 89, uh, remembers the day very well. She was 10 years old. Um, but it, uh, and, and there, are, there are a lot of things and, and everything that went forward from there are, are key things in her life, uh, in her younger years of growing up amidst uh, World War II. She uh, often talked about, um, when they'd be driving down the road at night and the, the air raid sirens would go off. And, and so they would uh, just stop where they were on the road and everyone would turn off all the lights of their cars as the air raid sirens are going. And they would um, huddle around the radiator uh, while the car is running with its lights off, parked on the road, uh, waiting for the all clear um, sign to, uh, to go. And that was, uh, that was a, a child or a teenager growing up in the midst of World War II. And, uh, you know, and obviously Pearl Harbor being that, that significant event that took the United States into World War II. Uh, but more importantly, you look back and you, and you go 79 years ago, um, our nation went into um, a, a, a very difficult time of being in the midst of a war, of seeing tens of thousands uh, if not many more of its uh, young people um, that died in the war. And I, I don't know the exact numbers on World War II. So those of you who are out there on your uh, computers, Google that for me. I, I think that's a, uh, an important number to recognize. How many Americans died in World War II, um, sacrificing their lives for, uh, for our country? And, uh, and so we honor uh, them today as we remember uh, December 7th and Pearl Harbor and the fact that we have a resilient nation, we have resilient people, 
and and we have gone through hard times before. Um, I lament that that uh, often in the past when our our country has gone through hard times, people have really come together in and it would seem that at this time that that um, there are uh, people that are coming together, but there's also a um, hard time of of people that are divided and and we're we're living some of that out right now. So some challenges. Uh, for sure. I'm uh, reading things coming up here. So Brandon, Brandon Patterson, um, 671,278. Um, I, wow, that just, uh, that, that floors me. It was a, it was a, uh, now David says 407,316. So, um, I guess Mr. Google isn't quite uh, uh, agreeing with himself today. I um, uh, hundreds of thousands of our young men and women even died in that um, in that war, and uh, and so we need to uh, remember that uh, this nation has been through hard times before, and that we serve a faithful God who is faithful no matter what happens and no matter how the, the nation's war, um, that, uh, that he remains faithful. He remains sovereign. He remains in control. So, um, so that's, uh, that's how we start the morning, uh, is, is remembering Pearl Harbor, remembering those who, who sacrificed, um, for our country and acknowledging that we're in the midst of a challenging, uh, time as, uh, as a nation. So, uh, I'm, I'm encouraged as, um, as we have young people that are growing up, uh, that are going to be learning, uh, what it means, uh, you know, especially as we raise them, as we raise our kids. And I see Brandon here, he and I have 13 year old boys that are in the, the same class at school. Um, as, as we are, are raising our kids to, to hopefully be um, salt and light in this world that uh, um, we, we want to teach them about God's faithfulness. We want to teach them about the hope that he gives us and uh, to be uh, people that understand that times are going to be hard. I think that's one of the uh, things for us to look at is uh, often our poor millennials and, and even our Gen Z that's following up behind the millennials um, are accused of, of being wimps, are accused of being the, um, the trophy, um, you know, participation trophy kids in, in that they can't hire, um, they can't uh, handle adversity. And I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. I, I think a lot of young people have trouble handling adversity and, and it's not necessarily generational, but it could be. Anyway, let's have that fight on a different day. Um, but I think we really need to raise our children to be able to handle hard times. We need to, to raise our children to be able to handle trials and failures. Um, I, I have a sign on my, or at least did on my whiteboard in my office, it says fail well. And uh, we need to teach our kids how to fail well. I, I strongly believe that. Um, and I, I, I know along the way that I, I struggle with failure, you know, and there's some of us that want to um, be perfect at everything and get it all right. And, you know, and if we mess up, we think the world's looking at us. And, and uh, uh, boy, I, you know what I love in the work environment? And I'll just kind of go on with this, but uh, I love when I come across someone that that happens to work underneath me that comes in and acknowledges their mistake and then turns around and learns from it. And I, I think that is such a, um, you know, that that's such a great thing for us to be able to just stop and learn from our failures. Um, okay. That said, uh, let's see, I see Brandon's on here. And so I wanted to um, mention this because I can. And this is kind of, uh, um, I, I don't want to say this is my show. That sounds, that sounds really bad. Um, but this is, this is the Bible study I get to lead. And uh, a little bit of time with a captive audience. I'm going to do a shameless plug 
for our kids Washington DC trip coming up in March um, that uh, uh, Brandon's taking Jacob I'm taking Peter and I think we got kids, six or seven kids from uh, from their little class over there at Summit that uh, get to head out to DC on a on a small little tour and um, and learn about the history of our country and and some of that and some of you have jumped in already on being a part of the little fundraiser that we're doing this coming uh, Friday evening. So if you want to be a part of this, no pressure, everybody. But if you're interested in being a part of it, I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to put the slide up here on the screen for you all to see momentarily. Um, but this is the uh, the fundraiser we're doing. And this is, I, I normally wouldn't advertise a fundraiser for my kids' class uh, on the back shed. But the deal is amazing. The, the deal is this, that uh, you can buy a dinner ticket for Texas Roadhouse, $15.00 half of the proceeds go to our kids trip. And so we're talking about barbecue pulled pork, barbecued chicken, coleslaw corn, fresh baked bread, all of that. And, and all you do is you, um, you uh, let us know you want to do it. And then um, you would, uh, in this case, if you want to support Peter, you would pay me that money and I'm going to turn around and, and pay our person that's uh, passing the money on to the restaurant. So we'll get that money to the restaurant. And then you come and uh, pick that up between five and six 30 um, on uh, gosh, what is that on um, Friday night, the 11th. So, uh, so there you go. There you go. That is my shameless fundraiser. So uh, you can uh, message me. I know some of you that are on here are already doing that. If you want to support uh, Brandon's son, Jacob, uh, you can uh, message him. Yeah, Texas Roadhouse Barbecue is fantastic, Randy. Exactly. Um, okay, a couple more things to get out of the way. While we have, um, while we have the, uh, the old uh, share screen going on here, Last week, we had quite the conversation on here about my Christmas lights. And uh, I went out the other night, a couple actually for a couple of more evenings and, uh, and finished it off. And so the debate about the poll, uh, about the signpost, uh, here you go. Here is the final product, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we wrapped the, I should say I wrapped the, uh, the poll with lights and then uh, I put red twinkle lights up there around uh, where the sign, actual sign is. So there you have it. That's the front yard. Oh, and I've added in a few more um, lights there around in this little tree right here and around the window. So uh, Clark Griswold is finished. Oh, there's, by the way, back in that back corner is the shed. And you can see the lights on the outside of the shed. Yep right there you see the lights on the outside of the shed so that is christmas in the back shed all right y'all came here um hopefully to get into the word a little bit this morning and i would like to take you into the word because i think it applies uh i, I think we have some great scripture that applies to where uh things are in life where we are as followers of christ and the world uh, one of the things that Pastor Luke has been talking about, and to answer Cam, uh, who piped on here a little bit earlier, and Cam, to answer your question, um, no, I'm not the senior pastor. Praise Jesus. Uh, Luke Miller is our senior pastor, and what a great man uh, he is. I am absolutely loving working with Luke here as uh, uh, on our team. I get to be the executive pastor, so... Um, and that's a little more operational, and, uh, and yet I get to do some fun things and um, love being a part of Sunrise. Okay, here we go. We are going to be in John, the Gospel of John today, chapter 17 is where I'd love to take you. Next week, by the way, if you tune in for the back shed, I, I see it almost as a follow-up to this week. I'm going to have uh, on the back shed will be a young man by the name of Brandon Setter. And, and we're going to kind of talk through this, this concept of the, the crossroads of gospel and culture. We talk about that intersection, that place where, where gospel and culture collide. And, and hopefully this short study today will take us 
um, there as well. And so in this passage, uh, this, is, this is that passage that so many of us know where uh, Jesus prayed for his disciples. He, uh, he took that uh, moment in the men, and it's, it's in the uh, end days. It's, it's towards the end of Jesus' time here on earth, and he took some time to pray for his disciples. So we pick this up in John chapter 17, and I'm going to read verses uh, 13 through 21 here, and then we're going to uh, break some of those things apart. So uh, if you're in your scripture with me, join me, John chapter, what did I say, 17, verses 13 to 21. Here it is. It's in the NIV today. I'm coming to you now. This is Jesus, all words in red. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am not of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of them, of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I also pray for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Let's pray for a second and uh, jump in to see what God has to say to us on this uh, beautiful Monday morning in the word. Lord, thank you for um, the time that we get to have in your word. I thank you for um, the fact that uh, this morning we get to hear directly from the words of Jesus. And, And I pray that your spirit would speak truth to each of us this morning. Um, that even my interpretation of your word, Lord, would be, um, would be right on with, uh, with what you said and, and, and what it truly says. Thank you, God, for um, your faithfulness in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Um, I want to, uh, oh, and also I know several of you have jumped on in here. Um, uh, Angie Bessenbacher, good morning. Appreciate you, sister. It is, uh, it is always fun to see you. I appreciated your series of texts to me the other day. Um, and uh, yes, I uh, last this last week was Larry's, uh, would have been Larry's birthday. And man, I wish I could have known that guy. I know a lot of you out there. Uh, knew, <coughs> excuse me, COVID. Um, no, I don't mean that. Uh, a lot of you out there knew Larry and, and he had passed before I got to sunrise. And um, so would have been honored. Uh, I sure would have been honored to have known him, but it's, it's neat to kind of know him through so many of you. Uh, and, uh, good morning, David Hoffman. Good to have you here this morning and David Kasprick. Yeah, I, I sure agree with what you said. 2020 has taught a lot of our kids to handle adversity. And I think something that, that I would hope that, that we do as, we look back at this year is that we're, we're all careful not to tell our kids, Oh, poor you. Oh, poor you, boy, you've had it hard. This has been terrible. I I think I pray that we would be able to, to teach them endurance and to teach them to, to look forward and to teach them to trust the Lord and rather to, to, rather than to look at, how hard this situation is to look at how amazing our God is that we follow, that he can faithfully take us through it. It's, it's a challenge. It's a huge challenge. All right. But I think that leads right into uh, what we're talking about here. Good morning, Valerie. Good morning, uh, Randy Pels, Maggie Lagos. Um, Love having you on here. So the beginning of this passage, Jesus says, I'm coming to you now. But I, I say these things while I am still in the world so that 
they may have the full measure of my joy within them. Jesus is talking to God and Jesus is, is praying to God in this, to his father. This is a, a prayer that he is uh, giving out there uh, regarding his people that he's leaving behind. And so then we're going to pick us up in the, uh, the next um, uh, the next verse here, which is John 17, verse 14. And, and Jesus goes on to says this, say this. He says, I've given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Get that. I've given them your word. So, so Jesus looks and he, and he says, I, I've, I've given my disciples your word, Father. I, I've given this to them. And, and, and it doesn't say this in this passage, but because of it, the, the world has hated them. I ask this question for us today. And well, it says the world has hated them. Why? For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Oh my goodness, people. J Jesus, in talking about his disciples who are following him, has said really clearly, listen, they're, they're not of this world. Their, their citizenship no longer resides here. They're like me. I'm, I'm not of this world. They're not of this world. What, what an amazing thing for Jesus to be able to say about his disciples as he's getting ready to leave them behind. Even as he knows that, that, that some will get ready to betray them, he still goes on to say, listen, they're, they are not of this world. So cool. So question, is that true of us? Are, are we in a spot that when the world hates us, we can be content in that and go, right, it hates us because we're not part of the world. Um, I think something that uh, it's easy for a, a Christian to struggle with is wanting that... I, I'm going to be really careful how I say this, and I'll probably say it incorrectly, but you know, we'll, we'll get it out there and we'll deal with it, is, is I think we can sometimes uh, want the world to like us as the church. I, I think we want to look good for the world. We want to, um, and, and we'll sometimes say it, we want to look good for our community. We want to be, um, uh, we want to be attractive to the people that are around us. And I wonder, I don't wonder, I mean, it's, it's true. Sometimes when we try so hard to look attractive and to look like the rest of the world, we're not showing the world anything different. We're, we are looking exactly like them. And, and I think as a church, we have to be cautious um, about trying to... Uh, follow the line that the world follows rather than where where god has called this could jesus look at us could jesus look at sunrise today and go you know what the world hates them because they're not of the world <laughs> all right let's keep going any conviction set in yet oh man oh goodness okay so here we are we're at uh, verse uh, 14 let's go on to verse 15 my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one. Oh my goodness okay read that again my prayer is not that you take them out of the world but that you protect them from the evil one as Jesus is praying for his disciples, he's, he's looking at it and saying, no, 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 no. I don't want them out of this world. They need to be here. They, they need to remain here. And, and if there's anything that, that we in the, in the church these days um, 
can sometimes be guilty of, that I, as a follower of Christ, can sometimes be guilty of, is wanting to exit this world because it's a mess and I just don't want to be around to have to deal with it. Everyone raise your hand with no one else watching right now if you've ever been guilty of almost either praying that prayer or saying, gosh, I mean, oh, I just, I just can't wait to get out of here, right? I, I say that. I, I can't wait to get out of this world. This place is a mess. Uh, a, a word we've used in the last year to describe it is this is a dumpster fire, right? Ah, I just can't wait to get out. Lord, take us away from this. Um, just want, oh, what did you say here, David? <laughs> I'll let people read that for themselves. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just it's, God doesn't, we don't pray to be taken out of the world, just taken out of California. There you go. Um, but, but you guys get it, right? Uh, I long to be in heaven. I long to be with my daughter in heaven. I long to, um, to be out of this body and, and in a place of, of perfection. I, I long for a lot of these things. And, and Jesus, when he's praying for his disciples, isn't praying for them to head up to heaven with them. He's praying um, that they're going to be protected from the evil one. Okay, so, so let's just stop for a second there. Could you imagine having Jesus pray for you to be protected from the enemy? How awesome is that? And, and you know that the, the, the Holy Spirit, I mean, Scripture tells us very clearly that the, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us um, in accordance with God's will. And, and how cool to think that, that Jesus or the Holy Spirit, and I don't know how it all exactly works, but is praying on my behalf that I would be protected from the evil one, that I would be protected from Satan, that I would be protected from the enemy. Okay, that's cool. Let's keep going, all right? So here we are. That was uh, verse 15. Back onto the screen share. Here we go. Uh, to move on, verses, uh, I'm, I'm skipping over verse 16, but let's read it here. Uh, they are not of this world. So talking about his people, they're not of this world, even as I am not of it. So then verse 17, Jesus says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. So let's go back to that word sanctify. See that right there? Can I, no, I can't highlight it. Um, but sanctify, set apart, set them apart um, by the truth. Your word is truth. And so, so literally Jesus wants his people to be set aside through the power of his word by the truth. Verse 18, as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Okay, let's, let's stop and break that one apart for a second. Um, as, as God sent Jesus into the world, to give up the, the comfort of heaven, to give up the, the comfort um, of being in the presence of God, of Yahweh, the Almighty God, to, to be on the earth in, in, a, in a broken world in every way, to be uh, in a place where the vast majority of people that would come into contact with him would not like him, and there would be, from day one, from the moment of his birth, a plot for his death. Okay, think about that. With Herod um, trying to have him put to death, you know, Joseph taking his family, as we talked about last week, and fleeing to Egypt and returning. And, and then when he comes on the scene, you have the, the, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, um, that are, are constantly looking for some way to, to catch him in, uh, in a lie or a sin or, or you know, in some sort of heresy and, and to, to have him put to death. 
This is um, the world that God sent Jesus into. And so I wonder, it says, as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. I don't wonder. I know Jesus is sending us into a world that is going to be full of hard times. It'll be full of persecutions. It will be full of people that are looking and going, you idiot Christians, how dare you? You need to be quiet. You need to be shut up for saying those kinds of words. That, you know, I, I, I think, so to, to add, to contextualize this to today, um, you know, we're, we're very much in a place where we have enjoyed amazing religious freedom in this country for so many years and enjoyed the ability to say anything we want without any kind of repercussion. And, and now we're heading into a, a point where the name of Jesus, in essence, is a bit of a cuss word in our culture. And is a, um, is a place where, you know, we could say things that are perfectly normal and acceptable um, in, in something as simple as saying that, you know, there's one way to God and that's through Jesus Christ. Well, today that's hate speak. Um, don't be surprised at this. Th this should not be surprised. And, and I know it drives us. It, it's painful but we can't be surprised because Jesus sent us into this world knowing that we would have to endure all kinds of trials. Okay, next slide here. Um, let's see here. We're not, you know, the great thing is today we're not overly long. Uh, verse 19. Okay. For them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. So Jesus sets himself aside. He sanctifies himself that we also would be truly set aside, that we would be sanctified. And this, this process of sanctification um, that we're talking about here is, is a process, or uh, you know, for Luke's sake, I'll say a process, that, that involves purification. Sanctification involves purification. It involves going through trials by fire. It involves um, a, a ridding of, of sin, that, that, that purification and sanctification is this process of removing sin from our lives and, and is of literally setting us aside for a special, special work that he has. Uh, for us. And, and so many times when we think about that, it's like, oh, God's got this special plan uh, for us that, uh, that we can look forward to. Our minds immediately just go to like, oh, it's this really cool thing. And, and it probably involves high profile and, um, and, you know, being up in front of a lot of people and, and, and being popular, and, and there, there are things that, that get implied with this that are completely wrong. And in reality, that it's this purification often comes through persecution, and that, uh, that the this, this special work that God may have in store for us involves pain, involves struggle, in, involves literally being um, uh, persecuted, beat up for our faith. Um, for standing for what's right. So, so sanctification is, is not this wonderful, easy, beautiful process that is, um, is one that uh, results in uh, glamour. That's a weird word to use. Uh, but, it, you know, it's no different than, than thinking about how Israel was expecting uh, their Messiah to be a king a, a worldly king, and, and they got a suffering Messiah. Um, it's not much different than that. You know, we can't expect sanctification to be what the world would 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 say that that it is. But it's um, it's going to involve suffering. There's there's no other way to say it. Um, okay, let's move on. We are going to move on to verse number 20 through 21, which is where we um, 
close this thing up this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Okay. My prayer is not for them alone. So, so Jesus is not just praying for his disciples. He is praying for those who his disciples would see converted to Christ. He's, he's praying for the people who we will have an impact on, for the people who we will lead to Jesus um, through this message, that they would be one, um, that, that all of them, those that are yet to come to Christ, would be one with those who are already in Christ. You guys, isn't this amazing? This is so cool that they may be one. He's, he prays for unity in the body of Christ for those that have yet to come to be part of it. And he talks about, and, and then he, and he, and he ties in this example where he says, just as you are in me and I am in you, um, just as you are in me and I am in you, just as, as God and Christ are together in one as part of, of the Trinity with the Holy Spirit, um, man, uh, that, that unity that comes, okay? And it says, may they also be in us. So, so may these people that are now united as followers of Christ be in us that the world may believe that you, <coughs> excuse me, that you have sent me, right? So, so may the world believe that Jesus is Lord through the unity that comes through his followers. Isn't that an amazing message, you guys, today? So cool. Um, man, so, um, so that's what I use to, uh, to kind of wrap things up here this morning. Is, is that followers of Jesus Christ were called to be united. Jesus prayed that we would be united. And Jesus all pr also prayed for those who would someday even come into the, the body of Christ for their unity, and that through all of that, that we would be united with the Godhead. God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Um, so what does this have to do with the crossroads of culture and gospel? The crossroads of culture and gospel is that Jesus, um, does not remove us from the world, but leaves us in the world to be his ambassadors, to be the ones that are living in this culture that are living out the gospel of Jesus Christ because we are different. And understanding that persecution will come because we are different and that we're not trying to live like the rest of the world, but we are living in the world and engaging the world. And that's why you hear us talk about church being a place where it should be the intersection uh, or the crossroad of the gospel and culture, that we are a church that is giving the gospel in this culture, not being of the world right? Do I need to say anything else? I don't. It's amazing. Um, okay, let's wrap it up with a couple of things. Uh, thanks, Brandon, for joining us today. Um, I love your uh, scripture quote there um, that uh, David is talking about, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participating in his sufferings, becoming uh, like him even in his death. Yeah, we talked about that on a back shed like way back in March or April. Um, so yes, Maggie, it is, I believe it's very, 
um, safe to say that he did pray for us. I, I think that is a uh, very thing. Vern Tapp, as a Christian, we know we are on the right path if it is crooked and uphill. Yeah, but I hate that word crooked. That's that's not an indictment on you, Vern. I just, that's like um, not an evil path, crooked. But yeah, I get it, jagged, you know? Uphill, back and forth, it's the right path. We're going down easy, flowing down straight and easy. We're probably on the wrong one. Or if you're getting ready, you know, look up ahead of you if you're on an easy downhill path because you're probably going to be climbing up here pretty soon. Um, let's see here. A couple other things. Oh, Maggie, thank you. I love your, I love your comments here. Um, that has always amazed me that Jesus gave up an unimaginable perfect heaven to live on this earth, uh, this messed up, sin-filled, eroded earth, yet we complain and are disheartened by our circumstances, even though we haven't experienced his heavenly kingdom. We can't miss that we cannot even, what we cannot even imagine, yet we long for it. Yeah, it is. So um, there you go. That's the back shed today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And again, I hope that uh, uh, you'll remember today throughout the day and, and not just that, but Pearl Harbor and remembering to um, thank the Lord for those who went ahead of us, who sacrificed the hundreds of thousands um, whose lives uh, were sacrificed in World War II, um, that, that we would be a nation that uh, would not live under tyranny and oppression. Um, and, and remember that, that millions of people in this country lived through the hard times uh, of World War II and they made it. And, uh, and that we will indeed live through these hard times uh, or, or, you know, some of us won't, but uh, that, that our God will faithfully carry us through, through this. Um, I love you guys. Let's pray. We're going to close it out and I'll have a, uh, a couple of announcements announcements. I don't know. This isn't church. This is the back shed. Uh, a couple more things to tell you about. Uh, Father, thank you for your faithfulness to, um, to pray. I love it that, that Jesus would pray for his disciples. Um, in, and I love that inference that we can, we can see that, that the Godhead would pray for us in accordance with your will, um, having us in this world. And so Lord, help us God, we desperately need your help as we are living in this world to be your light, to be your salt, um, to be the gospel um, to a world that is just desperately in need of it. You're good. You're faithful. We love you in Jesus name. Amen. Um, Randy and Terry, thank you for uh, joining us as well this morning. I'm, uh, I lost my glasses. There we go. Uh, so I got to read your comment. The harder path or decision usually is the best but harder way that God wants us on to trust him more. I, you know, it's interesting to, to uh, as we kind of close things off here, but it's interesting to try to teach our kids that the harder path is a better one. Cause right. What they just want to go immediately to the, the easier path. Um, so let's keep uh, encouraging each other to challenge our, our kids, our grandkids, um, growing up to, uh, to take the harder path that, uh, uh, the road less traveled, uh, final things. I, if you're part of sunrise, this is interesting to you. I had a good conversation this morning on the phone with Greg triplet. And, uh, as many of you know, they made it out on their road trip to the East coast. I think they took four or five days, um, to get back there. Sounds like the dog did not love the drive. Um, and then when they were within a 40 minutes of home out there, um, guy was in the driving in the lane next to them and merged right into their lane, never saw them. They ran off the side of the road in their minivan and, um, praise the Lord. Um, they are, are safe. Uh, Amanda was driving the car at the time, but they are safe. Uh, and the van was not significantly damaged. Uh, it was a little bit of paint. Um, but it looks like they, they made it through fairly unscathed, but a pretty scary situation when you're going full speed down the freeway. Um, so my, my daughter, my amazing daughter, Audrey, uh, when I'm telling my kids the story, she says, I, but, but I prayed for them to be safe and uh, on their trip. And I said, Audrey, God answered your prayers. He protected them 
and they didn't get injured. You know, it's like, it's such a precious thing. So, uh, but anyway, to let you know, we're, we're probably going to get to see uh, Greg on Pastors Live, hopefully for just a few minutes on um, uh, Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock. So if you're able to join us, uh, Greg's going to try to jump on for a few minutes. It's right in the middle of them moving into their new house. So uh, we're going to be sensitive about that. If they're not, if he's not able to join us, then though, we'll get him on another time. Um, anyway, that's it for the back shed today. Come back next week at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. We're going to have Brandon Setter, um, who is a young man that I think is living out what it means to be at the intersection of culture and the gospel. And so uh, I think that should be a fun and insightful uh, talk with a millennial. So uh, get your uh, get your ears on. It's going to be fun to listen to Brandon and uh, have him participate in this next week. Uh, hope you're able to make it back to church Sunday. Remember, um, we meet at 9 and 1030, both in person and online. And uh, praise God, he's at work. No matter uh, what the circumstances around us, our faithful God is at work. We will uh, see you next week right back here in the shed. And uh, have a great one, everyone. Love you guys so much. And God bless you all. I'm stalling because I can't find my uh, button to tell me to, uh, that tells us to stop. There we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Goodbye.